Um, good afternoon. Uh, I'm truly humbled and honored um, for getting this award. Uh, I can't begin to tell you how much it means to me um, for two reasons, really. Uh, one is because public health has been such an important part of my life, not just my life's work, but also my life. In fact, my, uh, my youngest son, Kieran, used to say that uh, I, I suck all the joy out of life because uh, I'm always talking about public health uh, in the family. Um, but the other reason why this means so much to me is because of you. Um, just such wonderful friends and colleagues um, who've been uh, through this with me um, for many years, and now the younger people taking it on into the future. Um, I'm really sorry that I can't be with you today. Um, I'm at uh, in Bellagio uh, for the uh, National Academy of Sciences Global Risk Framework Commission uh, uh, that's looking at the United Nations and WHO response uh, to global health risks following on from the Ebola epidemic. And for any other reasons, I would just so love to be with you in Chicago. Um, if I think back uh, a decade or more um, when I started working uh, in this field, uh, the intersection between health and law was so very narrow. It was really about uh, health care services, uh, health insurance, uh, emerging technologies such as reproductive technologies. But there was very little discussion about the conditions in which people can be healthy, um, which is at the heart and soul of what you and I uh, do. That's surprising, really, because the CDC's 10 greatest public health achievements, uh, when I wrote my uh, the first edition of the book on public health law, I had said that eight out of the 10 of those great achievements were due to law. And I was corrected because people said, no, it was 10 out of 10. Every major thing that uh, we've done uh, over the past century and on to the next century, really, uh, for the health and safety of the population are because of law. Um, and today, uh, you've taken this mantle so much farther than I ever could. Um, you're litigating um, for the public's health and safety in so many different ways. Uh, you're working on legislation. Um, you are, uh, the field has emerged so that it's evidence-based and looking at uh, empirical data with lots of support from foundations. Uh, and beyond everything, uh, you've really brought health to questions of justice and equity. Uh, I often think that what we need in, in our world is public health with justice, that is, overall improvements in the population's health, but more equitably distributed. But it's a really an uphill fight, as, as, as you know. Um, we have those that talk about government's public health work as the nanny state. And if you think about it, and I, and I, and I look back at all of the, the emails and the listservs that, that all of us have been involved in, the very first two amendments to our Bill of Rights, to our Constitution, have been interpreted as being distinctly anti-public health. The First Amendment on, on the right to free expression has curbed so much of what public health wants to do in terms of restrictions on uh, marketing of, of uh, tobacco, alcohol, and unhealthy foods, or labeling requirements and the like. And the Second Amendment on uh, uh, gun violence and prevention of uh, gun violence. Uh, so there's so much more that we must and we need to do collectively together, and particularly uh, my young colleagues here uh, today are going to be the future uh, of public health law, and I'm so very proud of that. I want to end by just thanking you. I, I can hardly thank you enough um, and say how much this particular honor means to me. I wish so much that I could be with you, all of my dear friends and colleagues uh, in Chicago, and so simply, thank you.